All right. I'm going to bring up a good friend of mine, Eddie Brill, who uh, you, you may have just recently seen on Star Search. But in addition to that, he's, uh, he's a tremendous comedian. He's a producer of a comedy club in New York City called The Paper Moon. It's right in the village, right down the street from the Blue Note in Folk City. No, you're going to love him. He's been here before and killed. Please, a nice round of applause, Mr. Eddie Brill. <laughs> Good to be back in New England, except the weather is ice cold. How many people here get pissed off when it's cold weather? Yeah. A couple of you. A couple of you. I get, I get mad right away. It's too goddamn cold. This really sucks. I can't wait for the goddamn summer. You know what I mean? In the summertime, I'm the same guy. It's too goddamn hot. This really sucks. I can't wait for the goddamn winter to come along. <laughs> the only time that I'm excited, like everybody else in New England, is when they say there's a hurricane coming, right? <laughs> People get really, they leave work early, they start parties, you know, hurricane, hurricane. <laughs> now, I grew up in Florida for most of my life in Florida, and we're prepared for hurricanes. We have them all the time, and we're smart. We tape the windows up with tape. Like 120 mile an hour wind's gonna go, oh shit, masking tape, let's get out of here. <laughs> But we do it anyway, of course. And of course, the house will blow away. The windows will still be intact. All right. And then we tape the furniture to the house. We tape our families to the house. But up here in New England, it's like two six-packs of beers, a couple of lounge chairs. We're going to the roof. We've got a hurricane. All right. <laughs> the way it is. And of course, this year, we had two hurricanes up here, and they were both lousy. And we were pissed again, right? This hurricane sucks! I live in New England my whole life, I get two goddamn hurricanes, they both suck. Ten pounds of coleslaw left over after the party, this blows! <laughs> People actually catering the hurricane, you know? Uh, but I'm feeling good. Christmas time is coming up. And that's when Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer comes back on television, right? This year, th isn't that a great one, Rudolph? It's a like cute one. 25 years this year, it's on television. 25, yeah, people, even guys go, ooh. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, right, Rudolph. But I used to, you know, these were primetime television cartoons to us. This was like the Tuesday 8.30 movie of the week. We're serious about this stuff. You know what I'm saying? You're really into it. And I used to get bummed out because everyone was so cruel to Rudolph, you know? Remember the coach? He's like, we're not going to let Rudolph play in any more of those reindeer games, right, kids? <laughs> it's like, what an asshole, you know? <laughs> and his parents, his own parents, take a black piece of clay from the ground, stick it on his nose so it sounds like he has a cold. And he's flying around going, she thinks I'm cute! <laughs> she thinks I'm cute! <laughs> hey, Rudolph, get a mirror. You look like a dork, all right, pal? <laughs> then he finally meets Clarice, the beautiful doe who has the highest singing voice of any cartoon character. Remember her song? It's like, there's always tomorrow. <laughs> like, like, you know, birds and owls are singing backup harmony with her, you know. And then, then they introduce her to Hermie, wants to become a dentist. What a wimp, remember this cat? <laughs> Why am I such a misfit? I am a screaming dipshit, you know? No guts, this character. And his boss cuts him down in front of all the other. I was like, Hermie wants to be a dentist. Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's like, calm down, Pops. You're 40 years old. You're still making toys, so shut up, fat man. Huh? I shook my head that way, too, at home. Oh, God. Uh, no, then, then, then they always take you to the same commercial. Remember that Santa Claus on an Oroco razor going over the mouth? <laughs> what good is a Oroco razor going to do to a seven or eight year old boy uh, or girl? I don't think it's going to work. Play Doh would have probably been a better sponsor, I think. <laughs> All right, then they come back from the commercial. They take you to the island of misfit toys. It's like, what kind of sick drug induced riders are working <laughs> on this children's show? Right? Remember a train with square wheels? You know? <laughs> A boat that wouldn't float. A pig without an asshole. <laughs> uh, no, thank you, Santa. You can keep those toys. Thank you very much. <laughs> then they introduced the first effeminate character ever in cartoons, of course, the Charlie in the box. Remember, he's like... 
Rudolph, please take us back with you. We don't want to be on the island of misfit toys, no. We want to be in a little boy's toy room. Yeah, right, Charlie. You wanted to go jack off in the box, pal. Get the hell out of here. Then the ending of the show, right? Rudolph comes in to save the day with his blinking nose. Santa Claus deserves an Academy Award for this scene. You remember this part here? All of a sudden, he, it's like, bomb, bomb. It's like, Rudolph, shut up that goddamn nose! That nose. That wonderful, beautiful nose. And they all start, dun, 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 dun. If I was Rudolph, I'd say, screw you, Santa. You guys have been dogging me this whole half hour. You want me to lead the sleigh? I want 10,000 up front. I want the coach fired. Then I lead the goddamn sleigh. What do you think about that? Thank you. My name's Eddie Brill. You guys have been fun. Have a good night. Thank you. Eddie Brill, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Brill. Now I got to tell an Eddie Brill story because uh, I don't I, golf, ladies and gentlemen. No, not at all. But he does uh, run a club in fabulous New York City, the Paper Moon. Now the last time I was playing at the Paper Moon, which I was supposed to be there this weekend, but I dogged out. But that's a whole other story. Uh, <laughs> My turn. To yeah, tell. right. That's his turn to tell the story. We're out to dinner. We're going to go out to dinner. And he says, oh, I got this great place for you. Wonderful. New York City. Knickerbockers. What a great place. Where is it? Ninth Street University Place uh, for you guys back at home. I got a free go. dinner out of that one. Okay. Ninth and you. <laughs> I want some Escarzo, Pepe. <laughs> Escarjo. Well, you're going to have to learn to pronounce it, okay, pal? <laughs> That's the way Pepe yeah. pronounces it. Just call them snails. Uh, <laughs> there you go. But we're going to Knickerbockers. Uh, myself, Ed Driscoll, and Eddie Brill, <laughs> another, another comedian, Ed Driscoll. All the way there. We're walking. It's a zillion blocks. And these guys are going, rain. is it a nice, it's a nice restaurant. I'm in New York one time. I want to go. It's a great restaurant. So we get to the corner <laughs> of this great restaurant. And what happens but two ambulances pull up. <laughs> Gage and DeSoto from the emergency crew run out. They got heart paddles and stuff. Eddie and I look at each other. We go, wow, this is great. Let's go in. So... Uh, <laughs> So we go inside the restaurant, and there's a maitre d' trying to block out what's happening. You know, he's kind of trying to block us with his chest. And we look around, and there's a woman lying in the aisle, passed out, with these guys working over the top. Well, three comedians have worked into this restaurant, and of course, uh, you know, you saw how well we, we deal with injury with Kevin's head wound. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, right away, the. The maitre, d' say, the maitre d' says to uh, Eddie, uh, what, uh, what section would you like? He goes, the no-stroking section, <laughs> please. <laughs> what, did she have the veal? <laughs> I'll have what she didn't have, Pepe. <laughs> you know. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'll have the, I don't want the breaded zucchini, Pepe. I don't put it away. You grew up uh, in, in New York, but I was then born you went in, to college. In Boston, at Emerson right. College. That's where I know you from. Yeah, well, I was in your first movie ever, that you were a young student. Oh, yeah. But you at know? least now you're on TV and you've got most of your clothes on. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a little bony during the film, you know. But <laughs> we were able to cover that up with masking tape. <laughs> Still left over from the hurricane. You know? <laughs> exactly. Oh, what a segue man you are. You know? <laughs> so how long are you in town for? A um, couple of weeks. And then you're going to go back to New York City? Yeah, going back to New York. You did Star Search. Tell me about that. Oh, Scum Search. Yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> I was the female vocalist. Uh, I sang a Whitney Houston number, but so did the girl before me, the same number, so I lost, you know. No, actually, it was a lot of fun. It was great. They fly you out there, put you in the Hilton, Los Angeles Hilton, room 532B. <laughs> Get a free room this time. Now, you know? Kevin did Star Search. Kevin, is that the same room, 532B? No, I was in a, a different hotel. What, ho <laughs> what hotel? Well, I was in last season's hotel. <laughs> oh, much nicer hotel, I heard. No, it's a much nicer hotel now. See, as the, as the show goes on and they, get, uh, they make more money, they, they put you up in a better place, you know? So I, I, yeah. I stayed at the... Uh, we went to the portal at the year before you... <laughs> stay right at the bus station, yeah. you know? <laughs> There's your own TV. <laughs> Just feeding it quarters. Yeah. Just keep feeding they give you the quarters, quarters you know? <laughs> they have a That's bunch fun. of tokens for you. That's fine. Well, Eddie Brill, as always, a pleasure Thanks having a million, you here. Mike. I had a great pleasure time. Pleasure with Eddie Brill. <laughs>